Welcome to this lesson where we are going to answer questions regarding types of variables. When we talk about a variable, we have said that a variable is a measurable characteristic. It is measurable and assumes different values. It assumes different values across objects. So for a concept to be called a variable, it must vary. Variation is key. It must assume different values across the object. It is measurable and it is observable. Now, we are going to talk about the various types of variables that social science researchers measure in the course of their research study. And I have two examples here. Now, there could be some of us who suffer from stomach discomfort or maybe they have ulcers and these ulcers probably become more painful when they eat citrus fruits or when they take milk or when they, they eat vegetables. So, when they have not eaten the vegetable or the fruit, there will be no discomfort. But immediately they eat the fruit, there is a discomfort or they feel the pain. So what has happened? It means these fruits have brought about a change in our health. Let's look at the second one. We have attitude and academic performance of students. Now, when a student has a positive attitude towards learning, their performance is likely holding other factors to be good. So it means attitude, positive attitude, may bring a good academic performance and vice versa, holding all other factors constant. So these two examples are telling us that one determines the change in the other. In the first one, the fruits brings a change to the pain that we feel, or it brings that pain or discomfort. Attitude brings a change in our academic performance. So that will give us the first type of variables, and they always move together. And this is independent and dependent variables. Now, this is what the researcher manipulates so that they can see the change on the dependent variable. This means the change in the dependent variable only happens or is brought about by the absence or the magnitude of the independent variable. So in our two examples, we bring in the citrus fruits, then we see a change in our health. We will feel pain or there will be discomfort. In the second one, we have a positive attitude and our academic performance improves, holding other factors constant. We have a negative attitude and our academic performance will not be so good. So these two are independent variables and these two are dependent variables. So independent brings a change. When the researcher manipulates the independent variables, it brings a change on the dependent variable. And the amount of dependent variable is dependent on the presence and the magnitude of the independent variable. Then we look at the second one, which is called intervening variable. Intervening variable. This is what psychologists also call mediating variable. Mediating variable. So it mediates. Now, intervening variable are the variables that affect the observed phenomena, but we cannot, they cannot be observed. They cannot be observed. 
they cannot be seen or measured. And this is one of the disadvantages of intervening variables. They cannot be seen, they cannot be observed, they cannot be measured. So they are normally called hypothetical variables. They are affecting, they are intervening. And where are they intervening? In any relationship, we have seen we must have the IV and the DV. For instance, attitude and performance. Now, when we talk about an intervening variable, it is that variable that affects the academic performance. It affects the observed phenomena, but it cannot be observed, it cannot be seen, it cannot be measured. Their effects are inferred from the change on the dependent variable. We can see there is a change on the dependent variable and that change is brought about by the intervening. So we have our IV, which is attitude, and we have the DV. However, there is another variable that is intervening. Now, we had earlier talked about constructs and we say that constructs are those variables that cannot be, that cannot be observed. And therefore, intervening variables are hypothetical constructs. Are uh, those hypothetical constructs, for instance, intelligence, personality, etc. And because we said they are hypothetical, they are not real, one of the major limitations of intervening variables is that they cannot be measured. It is therefore impossible to quantify how much of the experimental results are due to the IV and due to the IVV, which is the intervening variable. Let us use this example to explain. When we talk about this relationship between attitude and performance, and actually this is a construct, but let us use this example. If we talk about intelligence, even when a student has a very positive attitude, but probably their IQ is low, their performance may also be affected. However, we may not be in a position to measure how much of the intelligence has contributed to the performance. So we can only infer this change in the dependent variable which has been brought about by the uh, hypothetical construct called intelligence. So intervening variables are hypothetical constructs because they cannot be observed, seen or measured. And we have said one of the limitations of intervening is because we cannot measure them, but we can infer the change that is brought by the BV because of that hypothetical construct. The third one is extraneous variables. Extraneous variables. Now, extraneous variables again are independent variables that are not related, that are not related to the study. but affect the dependent variable. So these ones are not related to the study, but they affect the dependent variable. Again, we have our IV and we have DV. So this is attitude and performance, academic performance. So an extraneous variable again comes in here it is not related to the study, but it affects the dependent variable. Probably someone is saying, and today the same with intervening. The difference is with ex extraneous variable, the researcher must see them, they must control. So extraneous variable must be controlled. And to control means to remove its effect. 
remove its effect. So as a researcher, you must see the extraneous. In other words, you must know it and you must remove its effect. For instance, let's use the example of socioeconomic status. As you are doing a study in schools that some are in high ed areas and others are in low economic status. And from your reading, you realize that socioeconomic status will affect the academic performance because in those schools, the facilities may not be the same, the teachers may not be the same numbers, etc., etc. So instead of combining the schools that are in high ed areas and the ones that are in very low socioeconomic status, we may remove the effect of socioeconomic status by only studying the schools that are in the same economic status level. You may now delimit yourself to only the schools in the high ed areas and leave out the low, the low, the low, uh, or the low socioeconomic levels, or you use the ones in the low socioeconomic levels and you leave the ones in the high end areas. So what have you done? You have removed the effect of socioeconomic status so that it does not affect performance. And you now have an area that where you have control for that variable. Now, extraneous variables that have been removed from a study, they are called control variables. So when you neutralize their effect, they are called control variables. And then finally, we talk about moderating variables. Moderating variables. Now, moderating variables are the second independent variables that the researcher picks to study when they realize that it moderates, it modifies the relationship between the primary IV and the DV. Again, in any relationship, there is the IV and the DV. So the second variable that the researcher picks to study, because he or she realizes that it modifies the relationship between IV and the DV, is called a moderating variable. Now, the difference between moderating variables and the others is that moderating variables can strengthen this relationship. It can reduce or alter the relationship between IV and DV. That is why we are saying it modifies because it can strengthen, it can modify, it, it can strengthen, it can reduce or alter the association between the two. They can change the direction of the relationship between IV and DV, meaning it can make it stronger or weaker or even disappear. So unlike intervening variables, which again we say they cannot be measured, a moderating variable must be measured by the researcher. You must measure the, the, the moderating variable. For instance, the same, same example where we have attitude and we have performance. So when we talk about a moderating variable, as we do our literature review, we realize that teacher qualification is a variable that modifies the two. That if, if the new student has very good attitude and the teacher is not qualified to, to teach that particular uh, uh, subject, then their performance will be affected. So it means there is a relationship between these two, and this becomes the moderating variable. It modifies the relationship between attitude and performance. Now, these two are called confounding variables because they confound the change that we see in DV with IVV or intervening variables. Remember we have said you cannot see them, you cannot measure, you cannot uh, uh, observe because they are hypothetical construct. But they confound what we have seen in DV. Again, this one can confound if they are not controlled. And moderating must be measured. So these are the key variables that social scientists measure in their study and Feel free to ask any question that you have regarding the types of variables in the comment section. Thank you and please subscribe to this channel, share and like this video with your friends.